My name is Lori. I'm at MacArthur Island Park in Kamloops, British Columbia. And I got a question from a reader. My article, 10 Essentials for a New Pleasure Way Tofino Camper Van. How do I decide what RV to get? I've been told to start by renting a camper van and see how I like it, but I know living in my own van is different than borrowing for a few days. Any advice would be helpful. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Sonia, for your question. I'm gonna answer it with 10 questions of my own, plus a whole bunch of pictures of different types of RVs, recreational vehicles, trailers, a myriad of different types of vehicles that you could live in. The questions that I'm gonna ask you to think about are questions that are gonna help you decide what kind of vehicle to get, how much money you wanna spend, etc., etc. Number one is how much money do you have to put down on a camper van? And by put down, I don't necessarily mean a down payment. I mean to spend on a camper van because in addition to buying the van or the RV, you also have to consider your insurance, registration fees, whatever repairs are gonna have to be done. And I didn't know until I bought Ruby, this van, how much stuff I would need to buy to equip it. And it's fully equipped. She's got everything I need, but I still needed pots and, well, a pot, a porta potty. It takes a lot of money to outfit your camper van and the bigger your space, the more money you're gonna spend on it. So your first task is to uh, figure out how much money do you wanna spend on your vehicle. The other really important consideration, if you're a solo tr woman traveler over 50 who does not wanna deal with repairs is to consider buying new but it was shocking to me the sticker price shock was huge i had no idea camper vans could sell for over a hundred thousand dollars this german heimer goes for 330 canadian or 247 thousand us dollars when i researched used vans i saw that they were selling for like 35 at minimum and those were really old vans with a lot of mileage on them i'm not gonna buy a really old van risk it breaking down or something going wrong so i decided to just take a huge leap, get all my money together, and buy this camper van. Ruby cost 84000 There was tax on top of that. Plus, of course, insurance, registration, and then all the stuff that I had to buy for her. It's a huge investment. It's a lot of money and it's a dream come true. It's worth it. The other thing to consider when you buy a van is that they hold their value really well. That's why used vans are so expensive. Question number two for you. Are you willing to trade up or down or is this your absolute final buy? Here's my friend Lynette's experience. She says, in 2006, I bought my first trailer, a used 2003 23-foot towable. The problem was I had no idea how it was put together, what was connected to what, and how to fix anything that went wrong. Luckily, I didn't have a lot of issues, but the issues I did have led to lengthy and expensive repairs. I sold that trailer in 2014 and have regretted it ever since but I couldn't ignore the dream to live out my retirement on the road in a converted bus. In looking at the ridiculous prices of RVs now, the fact that they are truly not made for four season living and wanting to make something uniquely mine led me down the road toward bus conversion. I found my gorgeous Ellie in Edmonton and set out to convert her into my new dream home. I've never done anything on this kind of a scale, but I was determined to completely upend my life. I enrolled as a full-time student in YouTube University and began the process of converting my 1992 Ford E350 shuttle bus into my new home. I'm about two-thirds of the way to completion and plan to be on the road by September of this year. Is it possible to buy something less expensive? If you find you really like it after a year or two, maybe you could work your way up to something that costs twice as much and get a little bit of trade-in value on it. Question three for you is what do like-minded folks tell you about their recreational vehicle? I'm an urban dweller, I'm a writer, I like to make videos, but I don't like to be out in campgrounds. So the wrong people for me to have asked advice from would be people who like to hang out in campgrounds. Find people that you actually are like or that you think that you would wanna spend time with and ask them, why did you choose this RV? What are the best and worst parts of owning it? Where did you find it? Who sold it to you? Did you get it checked out before you bought it? It's the biggest surprise about owning an RV or a camper van. Question number four is where do you see yourself spending the most 
most amount of your time. I knew that I did not want to be in campgrounds. I needed a smaller van that I could drive in city streets. Do you want to be more rural? Like, do you want to be in campgrounds and avoid big cities at all costs? If you're going to be primarily in a campground, then you're going to want a different kind of a RV than if you're going to be primarily working in an office downtown. And along with that is, do you want a vehicle that you tow behind you? Or do you want one that's fully self-contained? Traveling alone, I knew for sure that I would want something that's fully self-contained. If I hear something when I'm sleeping in the back, to get into the driver's seat and drive away immediately if I need to. Yeah, so just because you get a bigger RV doesn't mean that you're gonna be tied down to the campground. You might think about an electric bike or a scooter. There's lots of options that you could get. Question six is how do you want to spend your time? A lot of people love cooking over an open campfire or a propane stove. And other people like me would rather be reading or daydreaming. What you love to do is going to help determine the size of your RV. How do you want to spend your time when you're on the road and where are you going to stow all of your equipment? Question number seven is what are the essentials that have to come with you? So maybe you have a husband or a wife or you have a dog or a cat or an iguana. Or maybe you have paint supplies like what I have and I found a way to stow it very neatly and I never use it. I also have a flute that I never play. Look at your life and the things that you love to do. Maybe you're a scrapbooker or a knitter. So think about the essential items that you need to bring with you or that you want to bring with you and make sure that you have plenty of space for them. Number nine, this doesn't seem to matter as much to other people, but it really mattered to me. How do I feel in the van? I insisted on seeing a lot of different types of camper vans and I went into huge motorhomes as well just to get the feel of what it's like in different places. When I came into Ruby, I loved it. I knew how I felt in this type of camper van and I had seen a Travato and a but I knew for sure that I couldn't buy anything unless I had physically been in the RV itself. And it's a similar idea if you decide that you want to build your own out of an ambulance or a school bus or something that had a previous life, go into it and see what it feels like in the actual space itself. But sometimes you can feel whether or not something has happened in a space or who the people were who owned it before. Just get a feel for what it's like to be in that space instead of just buying sight and scene. And the 10th question that I would ask you to think about after you do all your research and do all your asking people and looking and thinking and, you know, figuring out the money part, what does your heart tell you? What do you yourself want? I had actually committed to buying a Travato. We haggled over a price and the dealer said, because it's coming from America, I may need to change the price based on the dollar, the fluctuation. And the van wasn't gonna be on Vancouver Island for another three or four months. And I refused it. I said, no, I'm not gonna agree to buy something that I don't exactly know how much it costs. I don't care how much the dollar is gonna be in three or four months. I wanna know now how much I'm gonna pay. So that deal I fell through. And I am so grateful that that happened because I knew that I preferred the Tofino. I knew I wanted this little red van. I just knew I wanted it. And after you do all your research, I encourage you to just hone into what you really want and not listen to other people's advice. So yeah, for sure, while you're doing the research, get as much information as you can. But when you... But when push comes to shove, when you put down the deposit or drive the RV off the lot, make sure that it's something that you really wanted from your heart, not something that people kind of convinced you to buy or that they recommended that you buy. All right, those are some things to consider when you're thinking about buying your own RV or vehicle to live in. I wonder what that would be like to sleep in a hearse every day. No matter where you're gonna lay your head down tonight, lay it down softly and gently. Take good care of yourself because you are worth taking good, good, good care of. Mwah.